um, a lot of children born deaf because of some nerve problem in the, in the ear. This is the bionic ear, which allows them for the first time to hear sounds and also sometimes to learn how to speak. Okay, bionic uh, ear. And another one is ultrasound, which is uh, a great boon for um, women having babies. They can check that the baby is okay uh, and find any defects. You can image, image the fetus without damage. The electric drill was invented in Australia in the late 1800s. This isn't it, and it was actually too big to be portable, but uh, it was invented in Australia, electric drill. This is one of my favourites, um, which is called the Surridge orbital engine. Uh, this part here, wrote, uh, it doesn't turn around, it just does this motion. And that has great advantage in that the friction speeds are very low. Um, and also the combustion chamber is a very, uh, it's almost an ideal shape. And the other thing is the ceiling surfaces are actually surfaces as distinct from in the Wankel, there it's line contact. So the Wankel is very hard to manufacture. It's almost out of production by Mazda. I believe if Mazda had this, <laughs> this as with our ICE, internal combustion engine, um, we would be probably driving Sarich engine cars, okay? But uh, anyway, we're all going to be electric within 10 years. Um, another Australian invention is plastic banknotes, uh, made out of, printed onto a plastic film, and actually you can see... Microphone. Can you hear you? You can see that uh, there is a clear window which allows you to tell immediately that it's uh, not counterfeit. Okay, uh, this is Dr. John Sullivan from CSIRO. He was uh, an astrophysicist trying to read signals from uh, exploding black holes in the 1970s. In the 1990s, he used the information he got from that using Fourier transform on the signals received to invent Wi-Fi. So that's why we have Wi-Fi. Unfortunately, that was 10 years too late for me because I was working in a similar area and uh, <laughs> we never completed that project. These guys just lived down the road from me at Byron Bay, uh, Stuart and Cedar. Stuart invented the flow hive, which means that uh, I'm sure some of you will be aware of all the rigmarole that goes into extracting honey from a beehive. With this hive, you put a lever into the top, turn it 90 degrees, make sure your bottle's there, come back in a few hours and it's full of honey, turn the lever back and the bees start to fill the hive back up again. Okay. Uh, I won't invention, mention this or any other of my inventions except this one the one dollar patent act. The reason being that if this comes to fruition, then we're gonna see a lot of other inventions coming out. I've been sitting on this one for 36 years, maybe for another 36 years as well, because the patent act as written means that if it becomes public, you lose the rights to it, okay? Even I have correspondence from the Australian Department of Science offering to fund prototypes to this, that would not be sufficient proof. You have to give vast sums of money to the patent attorney industry in order to get your rights formalised. Fraud. Thank you very much. Thanks, Stuart. Thanks, Bobby. Thanks, Stuart. So Australians are not that dumb after all. So, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. What you say? Uh, so what is indisputably the greatest Aussie invention ever? Come on, come on. The Ute. The Ute? Actually, that's not a bad answer. The Shiraz. The lawnmower. Road tree lawnmower. Road tree Let's have a non-Aussie. I'm giving away prizes to Aussies here. Yeah? Just here. Okay, no. No, no, no. no. Even, even, even Stu missed it. 
A cask wine. <laughs> you know, we all benefit from that here and around the world. No corkage problems, you don't have to finish up the bottle. And it has another added benefit. If you do get stuck into it too much and you empty the cask, you can use you can <laughs> use, blow up the empty empty bladder and use it as a pillow. <laughs> Multifunctional. Cunning linguist. <laughs> Passion root. This is this is a mixed audience. Uh, yeah, pash. If you're gonna have a pash, you're gonna have a snog. I think in English. Uh, but if you're rooted, a pash is a kissing session. Pash. Yeah. If you're rooted, it can mean a lot of different things, and it's not the same as root in America. That's going round the highway. You're going round 66 Route 66. But rooted in Australia, you root around. It's walking to something. You can have a root. With a girl or a boy. Yeah. You can have a root, which means you might have some horizontal enjoyment. <laughs> or you might just be put up with it. Or you might be just rooted. You're absolutely stuffed. Yeah. You've worked all day. You're and if, rooted. And if I don't like you, I can tell you to get rooted, right? You could. If, you, if I did something wrong, you'd say, get up, get rooted. So it has many, many uh, connotations and depends on how you say it. Cunning so, linguist, the thongs. The thong. Now, who knows what a thong is? Ladies, gentlemen, who knows what a thong is? Is it some sort of underwear for ladies? Yes? Not in Australia. No, they're flip-flops. Thongs are what you put on your feet, the rubber type slippers between your big toe and your next toe. And the reason they call thongs, or in actual fact, flip-flops, is because of the noise they make, flip-flop, 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 when you're walking. So, they're also known as thongs, so don't get mixed up when you're asked to go to the beach in your thongs. Don't do this. Okay, <laughs> some people might, might uh, take objection. One saying cannot be unseen. <laughs> Sir, I represent Speedo, and we're prepared to offer you a thousand dollars to never wear one of our suits again. <laughs> oh, now Australia is known as a sporting country, so obviously this is rock fishing, which, by the way, is a very dangerous sport. What do you think the most dangerous sport in Australia is? For not Australia, well, even the Australians might have a go at this one. It's a, it's a sport that the most people die doing. Surfing, swimming, what else? Rugby league. Rugby league. Anybody else got an idea? Boomerang. Boomerang. Okay, this is the sport that I suggest you stay away from because more people die doing this than any other sport. Considerably more. <laughs> Obviously very dangerous. Up there with worse than horses, okay? Do not get involved in Lord Bowls, it will kill you. Okay, great Aussie word, piss. A multifunctional word. Off. Well, everybody knows what piss is. Yes, that's piss. This. this is this, right? That's a that's a that's a bottle of piss. Okay, you shout, but also you can have a piece of piss, which is easy. If something's a piece of piss. It's easy. And when somebody is trying to butter you up, you tell them, "Don't piss in my pocket." So it, again, it has many connotations. Yes, now this is something to understand. An American will say, I'm pissed, and they mean angry. In Australia we say, I'm pissed, it means I've had too much piss. So I'm pissed, <laughs> so I'm, I'm drunk. drunk. Right? If Australians are angry, they're pissed off. Right, they're pissed off at you. So you can have a piss on and a piss up. Piss off, man. And a piss off. Pissed off. And you can tell someone to piss off, which get like, get rid of it. And taking the piss out of someone is when you, what people are going to do to... to we did, we did say this, uh, this meeting wasn't politically correct, okay? So we did give the warning in the first place. Ah, now this shows a lot about the Australian character. The most trusted professions in Australia. Paramedics, firefighters. Australians love firefighters, okay? They're like gods during... They're running towards Holocaust, right? Um, this guy told me about this, he was in, he was in Germany once, and he was in a pub, and the German comes in, we need volunteers to fight this massive fire. 
that's needs a village, and then the other guy, he's going, oh, the strand's going, how big is the forest? It's 200 meters wide. <laughs> it's strange, because first thing I like, say, you're kidding me, right? We have, we have bushfires like 200 miles wide, right, in Australia. So firefighters are like gods. Also pilots, notice they come there, because pi pilots are like so safe in Australia. Rescue volunteers, nurses who come in way, we love our nurses in Australia, come in way above doctors, and here are the most untrusted professions in Australia. Have a think, what do you think? Politicians. Politicians, second from the bottom. <laughs> well below like prostitutes, right? Lawyers. Lawyers, Lawyers yeah. It shows you how... Think, so look where CEOs are. Two steps above sex workers. <laughs> Actually, lawyers came slightly above priests. <laughs> anyway, can do all. Oh, we're down to the final channel. We're getting near the end of the at the end of our stint. Australia's a big country, it's a big talk. So we've got three tables left in it. We've got the wombats in the corner, the kangaroos, and the wallabies. Right, you're going to get one chance at this. Firstly, the wombats in the corner. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! Aussie, Aussie! What about these guys on the side? They're just getting lazy, aren't they? You, you on the end, you get involved with the wallabies. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! The kangaroos. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! You've got Steve, he's got such a loud word. And these ones on this side, uh, the uh, wallabies. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy! Oi, oi, oi! I think it was the kangaroos, what do you think? Ooh. Oh. 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 It's, it's, it's a cat's whisker. Who, um, let's ask one of the other times. No, no, we can go one more time. Who? Who do you think it is? Wallabies. wallabies. It's us. The wallabies, you reckon? We can hear it. Second try. Okay, one more time. Wallabies. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy! Oi, oi! Here, you can split them up. Do you want to throw in something else to the mix? You're going to... You forgot, you forgot two words, knee tremble. Knee? We haven't come to the end yet. God, it's urges. You can explain that. Urge a wanking urge from the audience. Oh. Lou. Yeah. Lou, and it's not the name of a bloke. Lou and Dunny, it's the toilet. You're going to the Dunny. And the loo. Oh, the loo. is usually an outside toilet. The dunny used to be. Yeah, it, when I first arrived in Australia, after leaving England, 1970, we used to have inside toilets. My first accommodation in Australia was an outside dunny. And I had to look for the, uh, the redbacks on the, spine, on the toilet seat before I could sit down. And there were redbacks on the toilet seat if you didn't watch them. Fortunately, redbacks have a very weak bite, but of course, some skin is more vulnerable than others on the male body. Yeah. And so, if, if you're in America and an Aussie says, I need to go to the loo, you'll know what they need. And our final word is Q, which is also an English word, but Americans don't understand the word Q. Why not? Because they don't Q for things, they line up. Oh, they line up, yeah, well, we Q. We have the yeah. nearby one and and the sometimes one. you have to go to the far queue. And you might have to queue up for the loo if you're a woman. Yeah. Alright, so that's our last word from our cutting linguists. We're coming right towards the end. Now, Australians do abbreviate a lot of words, so this is short. Football, footy, tennis, ball, tennis, biscuit, biggie, chocolate, chocky, chocolate, biscuit, chocky, biggie. McDonald's, Snackers, Laptop, Lappy, <laughs> ACDC, Hacka Dacka, Dinner, Stuff, Afternoon, Harbour, This, Afternoon, Sabbath, Dinner, Dinner, Breakfast, Breakfast, Service Station, Server, Petrol, Penny, Bottle Shop, Bottle Air, Tomorrow, Tomorrow, <laughs> Bowling Club, Bowler, Garbage Man, Garbage, Postman, Posty, RSL, Ari, or Whistle, Smoke Break, Smoker, Registration, Regger, Aggressive, Agra, Pregnant, Pregger, Long Gong, <laughs> Swimming costume, cosy, mosquito, cosy, tracksuit pants, track pants, musician, user, U turn, Yui, York Mount, West, Westy, Vegetarian, Veggie, Cab Driver, Cabby, Lipstick, Lippy, Sunglasses, Sunnies, Present, Prezi, Christmas, Christy, Christmas, Present, Christy, Prezi, Sick Day Off Work, City, Kangaroo, Rip, Shampoo, Shambles, Relatives, Fellows, Expensive, Exy, Brisbane, Brizzy, Derelict, Dera, Cabernet, Sour Golf, Cabzet. So Australians for some reason abbreviate more than any other 
uh, people in the world to bring that stuff. They don't know why, but I think it's just because we want to get it over and done with and get down the pub. But there is one last video at the end of the talk. It's two minutes, but more than any other video or song I've ever seen, it really captures the energy of Australians and Australia at its best. Uh, I think it's great fun, and uh, it's a good way to polish up off the how to be an honorary Aussie for a day. Australia! is being used to save lives in life surf saving. Uh, they've attached a flotation to the drone with cameras and the lifesavers can go out to the ocean, spot for sharks and people who get into trouble and save lives quicker than swimming out. They will still swim out but the drones now are saving lives. So that's a fantastic use of drones from Australia. Okay. Closer together. Come on. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Come on, you Sheilas. Okay. Camera. One, two, one more. Oh. The big gun photo camera. That's it, Walt. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Well, 
heard just elaborate on one word for the the education of Yanks here, the word fanny is different in Australia. Oh yes. Slightly different part of the anatomy. In Australia, only 50% of the population have them. Uh, okay. And I'm sure that the Americans will look forward to putting something together for the 4th of July. And any other nationality, uh, I would uh, suggest, if they wish to showcase their their uh, national day. Uh, please see Wren in plenty of time because obviously Wren works very hard at getting speakers and uh, in some cases we're booked out till for three months in advance. So if it's your national day coming up in April, May, speak to Wren if you want to uh, uh, showcase that day. Okay, the grocery store